Hey guys, Violet here. Welcome to another episode of True Crime and Art. If you're new here, then welcome to our true crime family. Um, if you're wondering what we do, well, I will paint something that you hopefully find interesting and tell you a true crime story and hopefully you learn something new. So if that's your thing, then hang tight. We're, we have a doozy for you today. Uh, before I go any further though, it's my friendly little reminder to please subscribe to the channel. Um, it helps me and it helps you to know when I have a new video uploaded. So go ahead, do that real quick. Excellent, awesome, thanks. Okay, let's get started. Today's video is uh, from Louisiana. And if you have come to this channel before, you know that I like to do Louisiana cases because I am from Louisiana. And we have our own special brand of crazy down here. And I am not having any trouble finding it in true crime stories. So today's true crime story is about the only woman that was executed in Louisiana's electric chair. And if you are familiar with the Louisiana penal code, <laughs> I'm a 12 year old boy and laugh every time I say that, but you know, the, the justice system, we like to um, give really harsh sentences. Uh, execution is a thing and uh, people in Louisiana really love their death, uh, their death chair, their electric chair. So the fact that she's the only woman kind of shocked me at first, but that's neither here nor there, just a little side bit. So today we are talking about a woman known as Tony Joe. She was born actually as Annie Beatrice in Shreveport, Louisiana on January 3rd, 1916. Now, even though she was born Annie Beatrice, I'm going to refer to her as Tony Joe throughout the whole story, okay? So, Tony Joe was the youngest of six children, and she had a really good childhood until she was about six when her mother died of tuberculosis. Now, understandably, her father did not handle it well. He became really depressed, withdrawn, and he did marry again. And Tony Joe's new stepmom was like the thing that evil stepmothers are made out of. She did not like Tony Joe. Uh, she was okay with the other children, but Tony Joe, she didn't like. And some people speculated it was because Tony Jo was beautiful. Like she was stunningly gorgeous when she was a little girl and her stepmother resented that. Now at this point, Tony Jo's family, her mom, and her, I'm, I'm sorry, her stepmom and her dad have started regularly beating Tony Jo. Now, I needed more information about this because like a doting kind father I feel like just won't immediately start beating their child. Something had to have happened. I'm thinking maybe alcohol. I, I don't know. That's that's a violent speculation, but it feels like a good assumption, right? So at the age of 12, Tony Joe says, you know what? I'm moving out. I hate this place. They beat me regularly. Well, at 12, she had dropped out of school. She didn't have any experience or... Or, or education. So Tony Jo relied on the only thing that she knew she had, and that was the fact that she was really pretty. So unfortunately, this 12 year old girl goes to Miss Catherine's in a really bad part of Shreveport and becomes a prostitute. She starts working at Miss Catherine's. She is not only a minor, which uh, attracts all kinds of sickos, but she's also beautiful. So Tony Joe is a, is a favorite of the regulars at Miss Catherine's. Now, to deal with all of the horribleness of being a 12, 12 year old prostitute, she, I'm sorry, I should say sex work, but back then it was called prostitutes. So anyway, to deal with, with the pressures of being a 12 year old sex worker, Tony Joe starts to do cocaine. Now, I had some thoughts because I'm thinking, First off, where did this 12 year old get the cocaine? And how do you just like jump into just cocaine? Jeez, that seems intense, right? Well, I, none of these questions were answered because I looked and they don't have information like that on 1918. 
Is it 1918? Oh gosh, we're in like the 30s now. Sorry, my date math is terrible. In 1939, Tony Joe meets Claude Henry, who also goes by Cowboy. He is a down-on-your-luck fighter, amateur fighter, that was a regular at the brothel that Tony Joe worked at. And it was said that once they met or had their first encounter that Cowboy paid for, uh, they fell in love. And they were kind of inseparable. So inseparable means Cowboy would come and visit her at the brothel and, you know, pay for her services. And uh, eventually they would go on dates and stuff that were outside of the brothel. But just, I believe, a month, maybe two months after they met, Cowboy proposes to Tony Joe. And Tony Joe's like, heck yes, uh, I need a man. Let's get out of here. I love him. He is the end all be all. So the two got married at the courthouse and they decided to honeymoon in California. Now it's in California that Cowboy helped Tony Joe to kick her cocaine habit. And later Tony Joe would say that this was really what solidified the man that she married and, and that she loved him and that he was an incredible man for her because he helped to quote, end quote, get the drug monkey off my back. I'd never heard of that. Had you guys heard of a drug monkey on your back? I mean, I guess, whatever. Um, so anyway, Cowboy helped her to detox and get clean of cocaine and she was clean after that forever, which is kind of amazing, right? I guess love cures all, right? Now, it's not always, um, you know, good and happy and, and rainbows and butterflies for the couple. They come back from their California honeymoon, and it turns out the police are looking for cowboy. Why, you ask? Well, because about a month before cowboy had met Tony Joe, he was in Beaumont and he got into a bar fight uh, with a police officer there and he had actually beat the police officer to death. So Cowboy was arrested. He was wanted for murder and he was arrested. Now Cowboy kept claiming that it was self-defense and that he would get off and that's what he kept telling Tony Joe. But in the courtroom that you know Tony Joe went to every day to support her husband, Cowboy was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 50 years in prison. So, of course, Tony Joe in the courtroom freaks out. She starts screaming. She's yelling at Cowboy saying, I'll get you out, Cowboy. Don't worry. Well, everybody just kind of took it as like a distraught newlywed who just came back from her honeymoon and her husband is now in jail. Well, Tony Joe decides to move to Beaumont, which is, you know, near the Texas Louisiana border. And that's where Cowboy is going to be is set to serve out his jail sentence is in a prison in Beaumont, Texas. So Tony Joe moves there to be closer to him to be able to visit him. And while she's there, she decides I am breaking him out of jail. How do I do this? At this point, she recruits a man named Arky Burks. Now, Arky is a nickname because he's from Arkansas. We're very original over here. Uh, she recruited him because he told her that he had knowledge of the layout of the prison that Cowboy was in. So, great, she has an accomplice. Now, they, they have to put together a plan because you can't just break someone out of jail with no plan, right? They decide that they are going to rob a bank in Arky's hometown in Arkansas and use that money to bribe Cowboy's jailers. Okay, uh, maybe. Well, before that, they get two teenagers to rob a gun store so that they can have guns and ammunition. The teenagers do it. Tony, Joe, and Arky are prepared and ready. They have guns, ammunition. They have a plan to get to Camden, Arkansas, to rob a bank, come back to Beaumont, pay off the jailers, cowboy get out, live in happily ever after, right? Well, neither one of them have a car. So they are thinking, 
let's just steal a car. That should be easy. Well, around this point on February 14th, 1940, so she got married in November 1939. We're at February 14th, Valentine's Day, 1940. A man named Joseph Calloway, who is a married father of two, is leaving in his brand new Ford Coupe to go on a business trip. And he has to go to Louisiana for a meeting. Now he's leaving Houston and he has to pass through Beaumont, Texas. And he sees two hitchhikers. Now, Joseph being like the nice guy that he is, he's like, yeah, yeah I'll just pick them up. And again, this is in 1940. Like, people didn't know to be freaked out about this or to say this is not a good idea. Regardless, he picks them up. Now, who does he pick up in case you haven't caught on? It's Tony Joe and Arky. And during the ride, it was all fine. And they were riding for about an hour. They cross over into the Louisiana state line. And at this point, Tony Joe pulls a gun on, on not on Arky, pulls a gun on Joseph and says, we just want to rob you. We want to take your car. I want you to go to this abandoned rice field. They get to the abandoned rice field and Tony Joe orders Joseph out of the car. As soon as he's out of the car, she has him stripped naked. Why, you ask? Well, whenever she breaks Cowboy out of prison, he's going to need something to wear. So she picks up Joseph's clothes. He's standing there naked. At this point, she tells him to get on his knees and say his prayers. And he does because, you know, she's holding a gun on him. And she proceeds to put the gun right here and pull the trigger. So I have some questions here. This is supposedly her first crime, like real crime. How on earth do you escalate from nothing to straight up doing it in between someone's eyes? I, so I'm thinking there must be something else there because that's pretty significant, right? I mean, not that I would think about doing that. I just don't under, I don't understand how you can, that can be your first, your first, instance with with the M word, which by the way, I'm trying to change how I'm saying things guys, because YouTube keeps getting real mad at me and they keep, you know, putting my videos on, on the blacklist. Oh, that's a good show. Have you guys watched that? I digress. Sorry. This reminds me, how would you guys feel about uh, me doing just a painting class where I'd show you how to do this, put this on YouTube occasionally? Uh, that would be easier to prepare for than murder and painting. All right, I have totally segued from the story. Since I've segued, I'm gonna tell you real quick what I'm doing. If you are not from Louisiana, this is not gonna make any sense at all, or you have to be remotely familiar with Mardi Gras. So I'm making a bead tree. A bead tree is like after the parades, people take their beads that they catch and they throw it on the trees and it's really pretty. It's probably terrible for the trees and annoying for homeowners, but it's really pretty, so. I am painting a bee tree that is not harmful to trees and not harmful to anyone whose yard it's in. So there we go. Oh, I haven't gotten any paint on my wall yet. So there's that. After Tony Joe has now killed poor Joseph Calloway, her and Arky get in the car and they head to Camden, Arkansas, which was in the plans, right? So they get a hotel room and stay the night. And at this point, Arky is freaking out because this dude just signed up for, you know, bank robbery and a jailbreak. He didn't sign up for murder. So in the middle of the night, he, he leaves and he takes the car. So he abandons Tony Joe. Whenever she wakes up, she's like, oh, well, crap. No means of transportation, very little money. So at this point, Tony Joe takes a bus back to her hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana, and she goes to her, her Aunt Emma's house. Now, Aunt Emma is her mother's sister. So Tony Joe considered her uh, a confidant and someone she would be safe with. With that in mind, Tony Joe proceeds to tell Emma about how she murdered a man uh, near Lake Charles, Louisiana. Well, 
I don't mean to laugh, but it's ridiculous because Emma's brother is a Louisiana State Trooper. Emma's brother is also Tony Joe's uncle. So Tony Joe would know that her uncle is a policeman. So Emma tells her brother, the state trooper, what Tony Joe has just told her. So the uncle goes and arrests Tony Joe, which part of me is like, oh man, so much for family loyalty. But then I'm like, well, that was the right thing to do. Uh, anyway, they arrest her and they bring her in for questioning and she just readily confesses to the crime. She confesses to killing Joseph Calloway and she brings the police to his body to show him where his body is. So, of course, she stays in jail and she has a trial set for one month later, which that's quick, right? Because I feel like nowadays it takes months, even years to set a trial. Anywho, Tony Joe has the the tri her trial, and in it she says that Arky is actually the one that killed Joseph Calloway. And at this point, Arky had been arrested too because she had kind of given him up. Um, so she's laying the blame on Arky. Arky does not testify at this trial for her because he's in jail and he just doesn't testify. Now. Regardless of her saying that it was Arky, she was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging, uh, which <laughs> Tony Joe appealed this sentence saying that it was unfair because of the media scrutiny that her trial got and that she didn't get a fair trial because you see, she, Tony Joe, like I said at the beginning, was beautiful and the press were, they were eating it up. She was, she was beautiful. Um, cowboy was apparently very good looking and she killed a man on Valentine's Day. So that's like a trifecta for creepy, morbid people like us who like to know all of the details of things, right? So her trial was highly publicized and she said that it caused her to not have a fair trial. Well, a judge agreed and said, okay, you can have another trial. Let's do it. Tony Joe has another trial and this time Arky uh, testifies against her saying no she was the one that ended Joseph's life it was all her well same same ending she was found guilty sentenced to death she appealed had another trial and this one went even quicker uh, deliberation even shorter <sighs> found guilty sentenced to death let me get some beads on here real quick because apparently I can't dot and talk Okay, I'm back. So during Tony Joe's incarceration, she gave a couple of interviews and she even signed a sworn affidavit saying that she was the one that did take the life of Joseph Calloway in an effort to help Arky get out of jail because he had also been convicted of murder of Joseph, Call Joseph Calloway and sentenced to death. Unfortunately, it didn't help him because Arky was executed for the death of Joseph Calloway. Regardless, while Tony Joe was in jail, um, people found her very charming and really liked her. She was a favorite of the jailers. Her fellow inmates liked her. In fact, while she was on death row, she was granted a death row dog. So, I have a couple questions here. Who pays for the dog and who pays to feed the dog and who pays to keep the dog healthy? Like I assume it would have to go to a vet or get shots or something. I don't know if this is the 1940s, maybe not, but that was just some things that came to mind. Anywho, the week of Tony Joe's scheduled execution, Cowboy and an accomplice broke it. I, I don't mean to laugh, I'm sorry. They broke out of jail because Cowboy was going to save Tony Joe from her execution. Now, of course, Cowboy is apprehended and he is brought back to jail and he's distraught because he really wanted to save Tony Joe, but you know, he, he's a prisoner too. Like what the, what, well, I don't know what he's trying to do. The day of Tony Joe's execution, she is 
allowed to call Cowboy. And it was said that the entire time Cowboy was sobbing, but Tony Jo was very chipper. She was very cheery and upbeat. And she basically told Cowboy that he needed to get himself, get himself straight and get that zoot suit off and walk out of jail and be on the straight and narrow and do good. So I guess up until the end, she was kind of looking out for him. Uh, Cowboy didn't say a word. He just, like I said, cried the whole time. And as soon as they hung up, he, in a fit of grief, destroyed his cell. After she hung up, it was time to get ready for her execution. So that means, uh, since it's by the electric chair now, um, because Louisiana had commuted all hanging sentences to be by electric chair because that was more humane. I, I'm not saying my opinion, I'm just saying what, what, what they thought back then. So uh, Tony Joe, in order to get re ready for death by electrocution, they have to shave your head. And she was actually accepting of her fate until it was time to shave her head. And she started crying. And the jailers felt so bad for her, they went and scrounged up a scarf for her to wear to the electric chair because of course there were reporters. This was a big deal, this was a big case. She was the first woman to be executed by electric chair. So they found this, this pretty scarf to put on her and she is walking down to the basement of the prison because that's where the electric chair is. I did some research on this. It was a portable electric chair. So not every prison had an electric chair, it was portable. So they, you know, like the bookmobile, brought it around for people to be executed. I just, for some reason that was weird to me. And then it just adds insult to injury that they have it in the basement. I don't know, that's just like extra creepy for no reason. So on the way down to the basement to go face her her judgment, she stops in front of a cameraman and says, Mr. I've smiled twice today already. Do you know how much talent is being wasted here today? You know, if anything, Tony Joe has gumption. You know what I'm saying? The chick has gumption. So she goes to the electric chair and she meets her fate. Um, apparently she looked very nice and put together like it was no big deal. Now, Tony Jo, yes, she met her fate on November 28th at 12.05 a.m. Now, the tie-up loose ends here, in case you're wondering, no, the dog did not die. Tony Jo actually gave, or had it written down that once she died, the dog would go to her niece because she loved her niece. I don't know. I was happy to know the dog didn't die. Also, um, like I said, Arky did, uh, was electrocuted, ironically, in the same mobile electric chair as Tony Joe. And Cowboy was actually paroled two years after Tony Joe's death due to a failing heart. But in irony of all ironies, he died three months later after his parole in a bar fight. So closing thoughts. One, do you feel bad for Tony Joe? Because I feel like she had a horrible start to life and there had to be some other factors in there that led to a brothel and cocaine and wanting someone to love her. Um, but you know, Joseph Calloway is the real victim here. He was doing nothing but being kind and going to work. I don't know, but all I can say is this case was more Bonnie and Clyde than Bonnie and Clyde. Why haven't I heard about this uh, more? Because I live in Louisiana. I should hear about this. Like this is some Romeo and Juliet nonsense. Now they did make a movie called Pardon. It was filmed in Shreveport. Jamie King plays the role of Tony Joe, and I watched it. It, I mean, it's entertaining and the story is great. They took some things from the facts, but the movie shows Tony Joe as purely a victim and all the research that I did did not say that at all. She was not a victim in, you know, actual facts, but the movie's fun. So you could check that out on Amazon. You can check that out on Prime Video, I believe it's free. You can watch it. So any thoughts, any questions, any comments, post them down below. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. I hope you found the painting interesting and you learned something new. Until next time, be kind to each other.